Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Good afternoon, anyone? Can you hear me? Thank you, Ka Hui. So any questions before we start? Yeah, good afternoon. Do you have a, a good Chinese New Year holiday? Any questions? Okay, uh, yeah, let me share my screen. Yeah, that's a good question. I think uh, one student asked about a group. Well, well you talk about the project today. So what do you mean project? I don't even release a project. I will not talk about project, okay? Are you, are you, do you mean homework one or you mean project? Oh, assignment one, okay. I, I will talk about uh, assignment one a little bit, okay. Yeah, okay, I, I guess we can start, right? Okay, uh, yeah, first thing, uh, can you guys see the slides, lecture four? user level program through system call. Okay, yeah, make sure, yeah, you uh, let me know if uh, there's any abnormal behavior from the, <laughs> from the slides, from display monitor, yeah, those kind of stuff. Yeah, so uh, let, let, let me first uh, briefly review of what we have learned. So basically, we are reviewing a uh, system call. Okay, so we start from the um, process and go to the file, right? So uh, particularly in the past uh, few weeks, we talk about uh, file and directory. Okay? Then uh, relate to your homework. Basically, we talk about uh, um, I owe redirection. Okay, last time I think uh, uh, one student asked a very good question. So what uh, are the return value from dupe? Okay. So um, yeah, I I didn't expect that question. <laughs> so after many years teaching, so I I I didn't uh, realize I should uh, uh, look at the return value. Okay, uh, thank you for the wonderful question. Okay, so uh, later I end these slides. So basically you can see uh, dupe is a smart function, can duplicate the file descriptor to the lowest uh, numbered and used file descriptor. Right? So how to generate that lowest unused, uh, lowest unused file descriptor we talk about. 
we can use close to close the particular file descriptor. So uh, return value on success returns a new file descriptor. So basically, for example, if we want to uh, duplicate to the standard output, the file descriptor is one, then the return value should be one, right? So we duplicate FD to file descriptor. Okay, give you an example, right? Uh, let's look at this example again. So first, let's look at what what is the redirection? Basically, redirection means okay, uh, ls have an l. Originally, we will print out the output to the standard output, which is our console. But right now, if we use error, then go to my file, then the standard output will be redirect to my dot file. Okay? So that's what we call redirection. Okay? Then we talk about how to implement this redirection through a program. So uh, from this program, you can see that we uh, first open a file descriptor. Open a file, my dot file, return file descriptor, then we close one, then duplicate FD, then close FD and so on. So when we duplicate FD, because we close one, one is the lowest unused file descriptor. So basically here, the return value should be the new file descriptor, right? Because it's the lowest unused. So the return value for this case should be one, which is unused, lowest unused file descriptor one, right? We duplicate. So this is return value. Okay. Then uh, we close those unused file descriptor FD because FD already duplicated to standard output, the content. Okay. Then we executed this uh, 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 command, which is our ls happen. So uh, what happened during this whole process? Okay, so uh, let's look at this animation. We um, uh, discussed this uh, last time. Let, let's review this. So uh, in the beginning, we have a uh, when we create the process, we already have a three file descriptor. I opened by default, which is standard input, standard output, standard error, occupy descriptor zero, one, two, three entries. So remember, we also talk about through this uh, entry, the inside is a pointer, okay? Then basically point to corresponding uh system file file table okay from there we have pointer then finally go to our inode okay then inode contain all information for a file so through that inode we can uh find the corresponding file so in this case our stand input output error are mapped to terminal our console, okay? This uh, is treated as a file in uh, Unix Linux. Okay? All devices are treated as a file. Okay? So this is why we map to this file, use inode to manage it. Okay? Then let's look at FD. When we do open this sentence, this statement, okay? when we open my file, then, uh, after we executed, basically, we will use uh, unused file descriptor here, three, to return this one. Then create a entry in FDT, then uh, connect also enter the entry in SFT, then link to inode for my file, okay? Then close one. After we close one, Look at here, close one, right? Close one, one is our file descriptor we want to close. After we close one, this entry is empty. So this become lost and used. 
file descriptor in SFT, right? Okay. Do you agree? Lowest and used because we closed closed one, closed send output. Then we duplicate duplicate FD. FD is already open here. The content will be duplicate, right? So after we duplicate, the content will be duplicate. Inside this entry will be duplicate. So which means send the output now will point to the same SFT entry. Okay, because they will point to the same one, right? The content, the same content will be duplicated here. Okay, then in the end, we go to the my file. Okay, so then after we executed this exe cvp, remember exe cvp will load the new executable file, which is ls. Okay, that replaced our current process, okay, with the image, right? Okay, then we can execute it LSS, okay. So for this process, our FDT, SFT, in-memory inode table will not be changed, okay, for this, for, for this process. This is the image, okay, this part is uh, kind of, of our metadata related to this process. Okay, this part is not changed. Okay, so this is why when we executed LS, this process, okay, then we will use this F S FDT table. Then look at standard output because LS will print out the output to standard output by default this process, okay. The standard output has been redirect to my file. So this is why after executed the result, which uh, from ls l originally go, go to the standard output, now will go to my file, right? So any questions at this moment? Uh, don't use the dupe two, okay? So basically in your homework, use a dupe one, okay? Use this, your dupe, okay? So just use the original one. So generally speaking, we want to know the, the principle, right? So, but, but in principle, they are the same, but uh, yeah. Okay, any questions? No question, huh? This part is clear. Hello? So uh, if you don't have uh, any questions, uh, let me ask you a question. <laughs> if you don't have a question, then I will have a question, right? That's usually my trick, you know? Okay, so uh, can you guys see my virtual machine um, screen? Okay, great, okay. So actually last time uh, you guys asked a very good question. I remember several students asked, say that after we close standard output, then uh, can we resume the standard output? which means, okay, we redirect style output to a file, right? So uh, after, we, after that, we want to resume this, right? So that's a very good question. I, 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 uh, later I realized, okay, so because you guys uh, uh, know how to handle this, right? So let me, let me um, ask you to do an exercise. Okay. Oh, this is not this one. Uh, where is my, where is my, <laughs> yeah, 6.1 exercise. Yeah, I, I designed a exercise. Okay, uh, can you guys see the, 
this program here. So, um, yeah, let me see. Yeah, basically you can see here, I close the standard output, right? This is uh, from the slides. Then I duplicate FD1, right? Then I close FD1, right? Then I write one, buffer one, go to my file, write two, write one, buffer two, right? So basically I write buffer one and buffer two into uh, one. One is our standard output. So suppose I don't do this kind of a redirection, then we should right go to my file go to stand output directly to the console however after redirection those content will go to my file right suppose okay let, let's run it okay first Exercise. Oh, nothing happened. Yeah, that's exactly we expect, right? So because we have my file, go to my file. Hey, eh? yeah. So wait a second. We I uh, is that my my file? Man? Yeah, you you can see the content here, right? Go to my file, then go to send output. When I print out, actually, um. Basically, I cannot get those content, but you can see inside this file, when I do edit, you can see that go to my file, then go to send output, right? Uh, can you guys see it? Hello? Yeah, uh, is this part clear? Huh? Clear, right? Okay, yeah. So now go to my question, right? So my question is that, uh, actually this is a question you, you guys ask me, right? So I figure out <laughs> this is a very good question. So suppose uh, right now I want to see that for this right, this is a redirection, right? Redirect, redirect to my file for this part, okay? So which means Go to my file, then write to the my file. However, this part, okay, I want to you resume standard output and uh, write. Go to standard output to the standard output. Do do, do you answer my question? Huh? Is the question clear? Okay, so how to do it? Okay, certainly we need to do something, right? So how about I give you a uh, several place, maybe you guys need to do. For example, here, maybe I put some uh, uh, space here. Maybe you guys need to do something, right? Also here, right? So uh, anyone want to write down here? Because you guys can control this uh, screen. You, you guys can write. Use a uh, uh, annot annotation here. So you go to the top bar, you can find annotate, right? So click it, then go to the uh, draw, then you can, oh, you, you want to, if you want your test also, okay. So can, you can directly write it on the screen so everyone can see it, okay? Yeah, so don't, don't uh, send the comments, so just do it, okay? Write the code here, huh? For example, you just write like this, okay? Right here, right here, right here, okay? Oh, if you, 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 you need other place, then let me know, okay? So what, what you should write here, what you should write here? No, I want to try. 
yeah int standard up standard output dup one int standard output uh, okay yeah so this uh, this this should be go here yeah how about other part how about this part Huh? Give you uh five minutes. Close one, dupe. Let's go to here. Okay, this is the uh, first part. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this. Okay, so basically here, int standard output, right? Then we want to, this part cannot be after close one, right? <laughs> so we have to duplicate this before close one, right? So basically this part, we want to duplicate standard output to the standard output, right? Which is a new new file descriptor table, which is the lowest the unused one. At this moment, we have zero one two, which is our standard uh, in standard in right standard out and the standard error and uh, three three is fd one right. Because we 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 open by file fd one okay so this one is the lowest unused okay so basically this become our std out file descriptor right this number this 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 variable right this variable is here duplicate right lowest unused we duplicate the content standard output here okay very good okay very good. Okay, then close one, close duplicate FD one here to here, right? This one, right? Then uh, right one, right one at this moment will write it to this FD one, okay? Then we close one again, right? Make it empty, then duplicate standard output, which is the standard output is here which is duplicate before we close one. Then we resume stand output. Okay, then when we write one, then basically we can uh, resume the result, okay? That's great, okay? So let's uh, draw it, okay? Okay, let me first clean up here a little bit. Then I already uh, have the, already write this. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Six, two, one. Uh, yeah, so that this is this exactly the that student right here, right? So basically, I, I just use the return value, but this is the standard output, right? So return value, duple one, right? Here. Then uh, close, yeah, I, 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 I use dupe four directly, but I should use the dupe return, right? But uh, they are the same, okay? Then I dupe four, then I write, right? Is this okay? Uh, because that's that basically here here I should use the return right which is four right but I, I I just directly write four yeah let, let me draw it right so you may you guys may um okay go to the stand output right then uh this go to standard output is should be right. 
then my file should have go to my file, right? Huh? Any questions for this uh, example? The solution is here. So hello, any questions? Is this okay? Okay, so uh, then let me go back to the slides. So then, uh, can, you, can you guys see the slides here? So basically I'm gonna uh, go to the pipe. Can you guys see pipe? Communication between parent, parents and the child, huh? Can you guys see it? Okay, thank you. Uh, see, uh, here, this is related to your assignment, okay? So basically, uh, we also want to utilize this um, um, tube and the pipe to implement parent and child communication. Okay, particularly when we implement a shell program, which is a part of your homework, um, we need to interpret the command input by user, then generate a new process. Then uh, during this uh, kind of uh, uh, execution, sometimes user may want to have a pipe. Okay, so basically pipe is a, a special uh, um, system call, okay? Then uh, through this pipe, when we call pipe, we can create a pipe shared between parent and child. Uh, then a uh, pipe is really like a pipe, like a water pipe. Then we have a two, two side. Uh, but uh, here, because we are talking about the computer, so we have byte string. <laughs> <laughs> right, so in our reality, we may have a water pipe, we have water stream, but here is a byte stream. Then we have two sides, right end and uh, read end, okay? So FD1 is for right end, FD0 is for read end, okay, for this pipe, okay? Then we talk about this program here. Uh, basically, we have uh, a pipe here in the beginning. Then we have parents and the child process, okay? Then we want to implement parents and child process to implement this one, okay? This pipe here. So generally speaking, standard output from the first uh, command will become the input of second command, okay? WC word count, okay? So uh, from the program, you can see that uh, basically, uh, we first uh, create two process, okay? uh, one, one, one child process. Now we have two processes, right? One parent, one child, okay? After fall. Then uh, for the uh, parents, we are executed L as half an L for the Child will execute the WC half an hour. Okay. Okay. Then uh, when we execute it, then you can see that. So what happened here is when we set up those uh, standard output and uh, redirect to pipe, okay, in parents, right? So because uh, for parents, the standard output is redirect to the right end of the pipe. Okay, so when we executed ls half an l through the parents process, then those output from this command will go to writing end of the pipe, fd1 of this pipe, okay. 
This is the first part. Second part, we also close the standard input of WC hyphen L. Okay. Then duplicate FD0, which is the read end of the pipe to um, standard input, which means WC hyphen L, this process will read from uh, FD0 from this part read end of the pipe, okay? So in this way, ls hyphen l, which is executed through parent process, will redirect its output to the child process, which is executed WCL. Okay, so then we finish, okay? So basically, that's your homework, right? Okay, I, I look at, yeah, I look at, there are many um, questions now, okay, relate to this, uh, this uh, um, pipe, okay. So let, let's, before I answer your questions, let me first clarify several things. So first, this pipe, you can think about this, we, we do have a pipe inside our kernel, inside our operating system, okay? Then uh, this is shared by parents and the child, okay? Then how it works? Very simple. You can see that, see, uh, if we want to know how it works, let's first look at how we will terminate. So first, see if all file descriptor ref refer to the right end of a pipe has been closed. Okay, then if we want to write, if we want to read from this pipe, okay, a process want to read from this pipe, we'll see end of the file, then read will return. Okay, then read will finish. Okay, so what does that mean? Okay, think about that. We have a pipe here. Child process want to read from this pipe, okay? Okay, so right end, okay? No matter this is from parents or child, okay? As long as we have some right file descriptor related to this pipe, I not closed, okay? Then read will hang here, will post here, waiting for the input until all those right file descriptor related to this pipe are closed, then read will return. Is this clear? For the read, think about that. We only have two, right? It's reader, one is reader, one is writer, okay? Okay, you may see that, can we make it uh, become a uh, bi-direction, two direction, right? No, see, this is the first one. Pipe provide a unidirectional channel, right? So basically we, we can only do this one way, okay? From writer to reader, okay? Then we cannot uh, uh, do another run, another direction. Okay, if you want to do it, then you create another pipe, then make it uh, also uni, uh, unidirectional, okay? Then from the another direction, yeah. But uh, generally speaking, we can only, send the data from one direction. Okay. So we only have one writer, one reader, okay, basically. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this answer the first question, how this pipe works, okay. So basically, suppose, okay, we only have two situations, right? We have, in our case, we have a child process here. We have parents process, right? Okay, so suppose child process run first, which means after pipe, after pipe, child process run first. You can look at here, child process here, right? Child process run first, okay. See, okay. Then because parents didn't run, right? Parents didn't run, okay. So, we 
have write file descriptor related to this pipe. Right? When we when we when we create this pipe, we already have FD1 here, right? Then all those FD1 are not closed yet. Okay, so remember our assumption, okay? Reader, this child process running first, okay? So this uh, parent's process didn't run at that moment. Okay. So basically, after we go to read from the pipe, which we do redirection already, okay? After we duplicate this one, when we executed this process, this we will read from standard output, a standard input for this child process. Then we will read from the uh, pipe, read end. Then because FD1 is not closed yet, based on our assumption, right? Then we will hand over there, right? Child will hand over here, okay? Basically waiting for the input, right? So this is a, this is basically, this is a, why reader can wait. Okay. Similarly, let's look at let's look at the uh, another side. If all file descriptor refer to the read end of a pipe has been closed, then a writer will cause this uh, a signal. Then uh, then uh, we will return. Okay, return an error. Then return right. So. Look at this sentence, basically, we can think about, uh, suppose another situation, right? This is a, this is a one situation, the child process running first. Okay, then child process will block, wait for the input, okay? Then similarly, let's look at um, parents process, okay? Also, run first, this is our assumption, okay? Child process not to run at this moment, okay? So child process running, then child process, let's look at child process, close one, duplicate, blah, 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 okay? Then write to this uh, pipe, right? Okay, then you can see that, uh, right, if all five descriptor write has been closed, then this will return, right? So. Basically, we still have read at this side, right? Okay, then write will block also, okay? So either write parent process running first or child process running first, then either of them will be blocked, right? So this explains how it works, right? Okay, so next, they run at the same time. Okay, they run at the same time, still okay. Uh, generally speaking, we should have order, but no matter which one, either is right first or child first, then they will block, okay? Then normal, normal situation, right? because uh, after they block, then we have to end, right? And how to end, okay? End is like this, okay, right? After write finish, okay, end of the file, write say, okay, I finished, okay. Then let's look at, after write finish, you can see after write finish, write say, okay, I finish, okay. I, this, all those uh, uh, file descriptor are closed. I, I put the end of the file that I, I exit, okay. Basically this part, all those write file descriptor related to this pipe will be, closed, okay? So after that, because no write and no, no write file descriptor for this pipe, then read can be terminated, okay? Follow this first one. If all file descriptor read to write of the pipe has been dis had been closed. So how to close? Because I when we finish this process, we first block, then we write, then after we finish, then return, okay? So writer finish, parents finish, okay? Then reader will read 
reader will see, oh, this is the end. Okay, reader also finish. This is normal situation. Okay. So uh yeah. So any questions related to this part? I, I think this part is very important. So let me uh stop here, let me answer some questions. Then we can uh I think you guys ask a very good question through the through the um, chat box. So let me go back to answer some questions. So you can continue to input your question. Oh, if you want to um, use uh, directly ask question also, okay. Okay, use speaker, use your microphone. Okay, so let, let me see, uh, first question. Parents and child can share SFT. Uh, no, okay. I only say, right? We are talking about parents and the child can share the pipe, okay? This is the only thing we can share, okay? Not SFT, right? So. Basically, they have a totally different SFT. Okay, this is a, a totally different. Okay. So I, I hope I answer your question. Okay. Okay, the first one. So I hope I answer. Maybe maybe later if you have more questions, then you can ask. Yeah, just want to if you counter does not terminate properly, you haven't closed. So grip have So I don't know what's that mean. If you encounter grab does not terminate in okay. So basically that's an issue we talk about. Okay. So if you don't see this is the question is why we want we need to close all those uh, unused file descriptor. So in parent side, if you don't close that FD1 relate to the right end of the pipe, then basically your program will hang over there, right? So I think maybe that's uh, uh, not Drana talk about, right? So you see, you, you have to close all those uh, right, file right file descriptor relate to this pipe in order to make, sh make your program to terminate. Otherwise, the the process to read from pipe will hang over there. If we have some unclosed red file descriptor, okay. Yeah. What if I think I already talked about this, right? So if a child executed before the parents, right? So I talk about this situation, right? So basically, because we have a and unclosed read uh unclosed right file descriptor so read well block right so wait in such program wait in such program uh no don't do this okay then you will have dialog right so basically this already this pipe already introduced this block mechanism so you cannot do wait. When you block, you wait, then we have a dialogue. Okay, okay so uh, any other questions? Let me see. Yeah, uh, I, I, I find several new questions that maybe let me just uh, go through those questions before the break. Okay. Clean out, draw. So it's impossible for parents to wait, right? Yeah. So uh, through the pipe, when you call pipe, we already have this uh, 
we already have this mechanism, right? So I, I'm not sure. I mean, what, what are you talking about here? But uh, generally speaking, pipe already help you to implement. But when you do this communication, right? So we already have. But uh, in terms of uh, you do need to do this uh, wait or not, I, I'm not sure. I mean, you have to look at your program. Okay. Why do we, why do we do command to WC, but never use? C and D. Okay. I don't I don't understand the question. So in ho in ho can you have help me clarify your question? In the code? In the code? Why do we do CMD, but then never use CMD? I don't know. Okay, maybe let me go back to look at the code. Okay. Then the child process when we read and then start executing. Yes. Okay. You are right. Okay. So basically, we uh, we we will wait until okay read and close. Okay. Then we can we can continue. So let, let me go back to look at the in host question. So basically his question is why why do we do CMD equal to WC but then never use CMD? Okay. Let me look at uh, what his question means. So here is a little bit, uh, let me clean here. Oh, it's not here. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I should, uh, I already come back, right? Okay. Okay, let's look at, let's look at, so what, what do you mean we don't use the CMD here? Hmm? This is a CMD here, right? So we, we do use CMD, right? This is CMD, right? When we execute it, when we do execution. Right? Okay, so I think I answer your question, right? <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I hope this is okay for this um, pipe. Then uh, I think it's a time for a short break. Let's have five minutes break. Then I will continue to talk about this. And so uh, during this uh, break, let me uh, pause the recording. Okay, let's continue. Uh, during the break, I think uh, one student asked, uh, do we still need to find the group member? Um, yes, it's up to you. Uh, as I mentioned, basically, uh, this uh, is a group assignment. However, uh, the assignment itself is very simple. Uh, if you want to do it individually, it's okay. But generally speaking, we want to nurture this teamwork, then help you to find some friends to work together during this uh, pandemic time. Okay. So I think, um, so <laughs> this is online teaching again, right? So I think everyone feels uh, isolated and also maybe sometimes it's lonely. So it's good for you to utilize this chance to find a group member that work together for this course. Of course, discussion, right? Always encourage, but uh, except this assignment, all other assignment and project are uh, individual, uh, should be finished individually. Okay, so uh, one student asked about the homework. Okay, so let me 
talk about um, homework a little bit, okay? So I, I guess I'm in the discard here. Uh, I, I think you guys should be able to see the, see my screen right now. So can you guys see the uh, blackboard? Hello guys. Can you guys, can you see the um, blackboard, the homepage for our cards? Okay, yeah, so let, 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 me, let me show the assignment, okay. So, uh, so of course, actually, uh, you need to go through this, right? So, but uh, the the assignment actually is quite simple, um, which is a kind of an extension from this pipe. Okay, so um, basically, you can see that uh, if we have two pipes, then what happens? Generally speaking, the question is like this, right? So of course, not only that, okay? You have to uh, understand how to, how we, how we uh, interpret the input, okay? So basically we provide some uh, code for you, already help you to uh, pass the input string, the input string here then uh, I strongly recommend you to go through this tutorial and look at the code we provide. So really understand what happened. For example, print out the input, okay? Through those uh, uh, arguments array, then really understand what are input, okay? Then uh, go to the assignment. Basically, the assignment question is like this, okay? So we already provided some code for you. So you can, right now you can execute it, those uh, simple command, one command, for example, okay? So how to do it? <laughs> Very simple, after, after we, receive the input, for example, ls here, then we will fork a child process, okay? Then uh, use the exe CVP in the child process, then to do it, that's it, okay? So the question is, so suppose we have pipe, right? Then this cannot handled by the program we provide, then you have to extend this program to make it uh, um, support this uh, this kind of uh, input. For example, up to the two command. For example, right? WC have an L, then grape, right? For example, CMP. Uh, okay. Then uh, you you program should should be able to handle this. Okay, so basically that's a, that's the program we provide, okay? So how to do it, okay? So I, my suggestion is that you start with uh, this, uh, you write a program to implement, uh, you implement the simple stuff first, okay? What, I mean is that you write a program to first, you can execute it, this uh, two pipes with a simple program, like the program we provide to you, which can execute it LS, go to WCL, right? Then you end one more child process, make it uh, work with this uh, third part. Okay. Then you extend, you go back to look at the assignment 
then um, uh, understand that program, then um, make it work, okay, for the up to two pipes, okay. So, uh, yeah, there's a confusion about the space between blah, blah, blah. I think we don't need when you use a string. I, I, I see, okay. Yeah, so the this is a kind of, a, basically after you go through this assignment, then you will understand. Generally speaking, when we, uh, divide those uh, command, how to do the, which one is a delimiter, okay? So we, we use those space to separate all those commands. For example, ls space, then ls is a command, right? If uh, we use ls uh, vertical line here, that, that means if they, we don't have space, which means we will treat them as a command. Okay, so that's uh, uh, what we mentioned here. Oh, two is okay. We need three process. Oh, two zero. Okay, so this is part of uh, the assignment. Okay, it's up to you. Okay, to do this. Okay, so uh, don't ask this kind of question, right? So then after you do the homework, then you know how to do it. Otherwise, this kind of question cannot help you to solve the, uh, to simply, to need to simply ask this question, to answer this question, this kind of question cannot help you okay, that much. You have to go through this, then think about how many process you need and so on, okay. Yeah, so any other question related to assignment? I think one student particularly asked to discuss the assignment, okay. Any other questions related to the assignment? Okay, so uh, let, let, let's go back to look at uh, our slide. Okay, okay so uh, now I'm going to finish this part for the system call. Um, I will introduce several more uh, system call. Okay, can you guys see the F sync here? Hello, guys. Okay, I think right. So I'm talking about I think right now. Okay. So um, basically, uh, uh, because as we introduced before, um, hard disk is very slow. So um, we want to cache data in memory somehow, okay? However, in some cases, we need to uh, persist our data. Okay, for example, in database, suppose this relate to our bank transaction, okay? Then if uh, we have a power filler, then all data, in memory will be um, will be lost. Okay, so we have to persist our data onto the storage. Okay, so in that case, we can use fsync. Okay, basically use fsync, then we can uh, force the data to be right to the file. Okay, uh, to to the disk. Right, our file are stored on the disk. So how to use it? Here we have some uh, introduction here. Basically, you can look at. Okay, I don't want to go the detail, but a uh, very straightforward. Uh, so remember, if you want to uh, persist your data, then you need to use I think. Okay, rename. Uh, if you want, you want to change to a new name, then you can use this uh, uh, system call rename. Okay. Then uh, if you want to show the status of um, states, 
of a uh, uh, file, then you can use state. Okay, so we also have a command here. Basically, later I will show you. Okay, so you use uh, state, then basically we can see the information related to this file. Particularly, you can see that the size, okay, uh, the size six blocks. Okay, then this is a regular file. Uh, then uh, we have inode, right? So remember, inode is very important. Inode is uh, ID for the internal representation. So use this inode number, then basically we can find the inode. Then inside the inode, it contain all information related to a file. Later we'll talk about this, okay? We also have an information called link, okay? Which also is interesting. We'll talk about this very soon. What is a block? Okay, so related to those block and so on, we will talk about. Okay, but generally speaking, um, in disk, we will divide our disk into a uh, fixed size unit we call block. For example, each block is four kilobytes. Then um, we will use a block number as the ID. Then use a block number, we can directly refer a particular four kilobytes on the disk, okay? We will talk about this later, okay? So when we talk about the file system implementation, we'll talk about this, okay? Um, uh, next one is remove. Basically, when we use remove this command, okay? Actually, we will call a system call, call unlink, which is reduce the link of a file. So this is related to this link for a particular file, okay? So uh, I will talk about this later. I will go back to talk about this, okay? So why, when we remove a file, we don't directly remove this file from the, our system. So why we only reduce the link, right? So we'll talk about this later. So another important topic related to the directory. Um, directory, as we mentioned, Directory is a special file, okay? This is a special file, okay? So inside this file, actually it will store the information under this directory, all those file information. Basically, we want to have a mapping between inode number and the file name under this directory, okay? This mapping, okay? So uh, then we can make a directory, then we can use this uh, uh, this uh, system call to make a directory, okay? Then after that, we can see that, okay? Then as I mentioned, for directory, this is a special file, then we can read his content. The structure is like this, you can see, here, we, we have a file name here, then we have inode, we also have a type and so on. So those help us to save some space. Don't worry about those details, okay? But generally speaking, this is a file name and the inode number, each entry, okay? Then uh, for a particular directory file, we can read the content of this file, okay? For example, here. I want to open dot. Dot basically means current directory. Okay, I want to open this current directory. Use this system call open current directory. Then I can read the directory entry. Okay, for this uh, 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 directory file. Then each time I want to print out the information, I know number and the file name. Then after that, I finish, okay. So basically this part, we go to a loop because we open this file for this uh, current directory file. Then we each time just read one directory entry from this directory file, then print out the information related to this mapping. Then after we finish, uh, which is the end of the file, then we stop, okay? 
So this is how it works. So uh, let me let me run this program. Okay, this this one is important, right? You can see that uh, we have this nine, right? So this is a uh, exactly the file I present the the source file, right? So C source file. So first I open the current directory. Dot is the current directory. Then I do some assertion. Okay, I assume this is not uh, none. Okay, then uh. I want to read each uh, directory entry from this file. So you can see that I have a structure here, which is the structure we talk about. Okay. Then uh, each time when we read an uh, entry from this file, then uh, uh, start this into this uh, D, then use D to print out, okay? Print out this. So basically that's uh, how this program works. So then let me run this program uh, because uh, later we'll talk about this, but uh, you can see under current directory, this special file, we have uh, all those content. See this directory file, you can see we have uh, I know number here, then we have a file name, for example, dot. Dot is, dot is a current directory. This one is parents, dot dot is parents, okay? Then this is the other files under this uh, uh, directory, okay? Any questions for this one? Hello guys? Can you see my uh, virtual machine console here? Hello? So, so is this clear? You can see directory also is a file, it's a special file. The content is like this, okay? Of course, we, have, we also have other information, but the generally speaking is a mapping between inode number and the file name. Okay, now let, let me go back to um, Okay, so remove directory, right? It's straightforward, okay? Then we can directly remove the directory, okay? Then, um, so I, I want to spend some time on this uh, link, okay? So this uh, pretty much relate to the directory file we talk about. Okay, uh, basically we can link, uh, as we mentioned here, this is a system call. You can see that we can link, you provide the old file path name, then a link to the new file. Okay, then uh, description link. This link can, this, this system called link, can link a new file name to an old one. Then uh, this is kind of a, another name for the same file, okay? So remember, as I mentioned in the beginning, when, you, when we talk about file, actually later we will talk about this. Inside our file system, we will have um, this structure called inode. Then inode actually is the internal representation for this file. Okay, then how to find a particular inode for a file? Then we have inode number, right? Okay, inode number, which is the ID of a file. So then file name actually just uh, used to find this inode number, okay? So as long as we can build up this relationship between file name and inode number, then we can connect this file name with this particular file. So how to do that? 
remember, we talk about directory file, right? Under a particular, inside a particular directory file, we build, we contain this mapping between file name and his corresponding inode, okay? Then use link, we can end this entry into a particular directory file, right? For example, this is a command, okay? Suppose we have a file called a file, uh, then uh, we can link file to file two. Okay, then we can cat file two. Then file two actually refer to the same file. Okay. File two is another name basically inside our directory. So you can think about file one, file, right? Suppose file, the inode number. This is our, suppose this is our file name inside our directory file. Okay, then we have inode. Okay, suppose file, the I know number is 35, okay? Then actually when we link file to file two, so what happened? Basically we end file two into the current directory file with same I know number 32, okay? That's the only thing we did. So this is why when we cut file two, when we cut file two, then we will see what, what, what is the file two? Okay, file two, what is the I know number corresponding? And then find of 32, uh, 35, which is hello world. Okay, the same file before by file. Okay. So how uh, link works, this is summary of what I have mentioned. Okay, we create another name in the directory file then we refer it to the same I know number of the original file. Then uh, now we have two home names, file one, file and file two, that both refer to the same file. Okay. So um, um, then if we want to show this uh, um, I know number, you can see that we can use ls hyphen i which is a parameter we provide to this command to show the uh, I know number, then you can see file and file two have the same I know number. Later I will show you, okay? So there's no difference between file and file two because they are the name, okay? They refer to the same I node. I node number is used to represent our file, okay? <laughs> so, I know number is our real file, basically, you can think about, okay? File is only a name, okay? For example, you can call me Zili, you can call me Sili, right? It doesn't matter. I'm the person here, stand here, right? Sit here, right? Yeah, so you are right. I think one student access. so we have, we have two entries in the directory file. Yes, we have two entries inside the directory file. That's it, okay? but they refer to the same I know number. So that's exactly what I'm talking about, right? So we have, a, we, we can have as many entries uh, for the same I know number. Okay. So this is a very similar to the uh, Windows when you want to create a shortcut, basically you, you also create a link, right? For that. Yeah, so, yeah, that, let's go to the unlink, right? So basically we remove a file then we call unlink. So this is the why I said when we remove, we just uh, use uh, unlink, right? I, I said we will go back, right? So when we unlink, actually you can see when we remove a file, we will use unlink. We will reduce the link number by one. Then until this link number becomes zero, which means uh, no file is linked to this I know number. At that time, we will really delete this file from the file system, okay? So basically this uh, we call reference count or link number over there, track how many different file names has been linked to this I know, right? Remember, However, we want to create a file name, map to a particular inode, then we have to 
and this link, this reference count by one. Okay, so this number is used to track how many different file names has been linked to this I know. Okay, so when N link is called the reference count uh, decrement, decrease by one. Okay, if reference count reaches zero, the file system need to free this inode and the related data blocks. Okay, so basically we will talk about this, but generally speaking is that if this uh, reference count becomes zero, which means uh, we should really delete this file from our system, uh, relate to the inode, relate to our real data. Okay, we uh, start in this file. This is a truly deleted file. So uh, generally speaking, Okay, so when we create a file, we will uh, create an inode, then correspondingly we will uh, maintain a reference count. Okay, then this reference count becomes zero. At that time, we need to delete this file from the system. Okay, so this is a kind of a summer uh, command. So I, I, will, I, will, I will go to, to um, I will go to run this program, then you know what I'm talking about. Okay, can you guys uh, see my uh, virtual machine screen? Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, I don't have any file, right? You can see at this moment, right? So, so suppose I want to echo hello, right? Echo hello means I want to print out hello right, to the console, right? So you can see echo hello over there. Okay. So maybe this uh, uh, a little bit. Yeah, so I think it, now you can see the hello, right? So now if I want to uh, redirect this to A, to a file A, right? So you can see now I can see the content because I redirect the content to the hello then uh, to the A, file A. So when I cut A, then I can see how, right? So now I want to link, right? A and B, right? Okay, let's let's see, okay, what happened? So first, if I cut B, it's also hello, <laughs> right? The reason is that, let's see, okay, I, right? You can see that both A, Both A, this file A, and file B will refer to the same inode, right? Same inode, same file, right? So this is why when I cut B, oh, I cut A. Finally, we will go to the this file, this inode number. So this is why their content are the same, right? Okay. So this is a link, right? Okay, now let's look at some states. Okay, look at A. State A. You can see A, uh, the link here. The link, the link here to I know number. Okay. Yeah, so suppose I want to state B. You can see they are the same <laughs> link to I know number, size, block, I regular file. Everything is the same, okay? Everything is the same. The reason is that when we look at this statistic, of a file, actually, we are look at the real file, which is our inode number to represent that file. Then they they, are the, they have the same inode number, so A and B only a name. And we go to the real file, then they are the same. Okay. Okay. Now let's remove. Okay. So basically, you can see links here. Reference count is two, right? So suppose I remove A. Okay. So 
if I want to cut B, what happened? Huh? What are output here? <laughs> Still hollow, right? So what happened here? So let's look at after we remove A, link is reduced. Is this exactly what we discussed? When we remove a file, we will reduce the reference count. That link is reduced by one. However, we still have file name linked to this inode. Then this file will be kept in the system, right? Okay, this is how it works, okay. Right? Okay, so we can, we can do whatever, okay? So for example, we link B to A again, okay? Oh, link A to C, right? Link C to D. Then let's look at. So my question is how many links we have for this file? Huh? A, B, C, D, right? Four, right? You can see four, right? Okay. Then, then you can remove, you can remove A, you can remove B, you can remove C, right? This file still over there, okay? Then link could become one. Okay, when you remove D, nothing. <laughs> we don't have file now, okay? So yeah, this is a uh, called hard link. Okay, basically you can see here, we didn't really create a new file when we do link. We only end a mapping entry inside a particular directory file. So we end a file name linked with this inode number, then end the reference count by one for this file, I know number, related to this file, right? Then that's what we have done, okay, for the link, okay? So, uh, any question related to LN, this link, we call hard link, this one. Okay, so unlink is, uh, yeah, I think one student asked one question. Yeah, let, 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 let me maybe we do, uh, but they appear to enter inside the search. Yeah, let, let, let me copy. Maybe I, maybe I will answer your question later. Okay, how about that? Okay, so let, let, me, let me go through uh, the slides first. Okay, let me go back to talk about uh, hard, hard link. Okay, then I will go back to answer some questions. I, I realize there are some questions, okay. Okay, so we have a uh, um, hard link, right? Then we also have another link called symbolic link, okay? Symbolic link is a third type of the file. Is a special file, okay? Uh, what are difference between this symbolic link? Oh, we call it soft link, okay? So generally speaking, when we use a symbolic link to link to a file, then we really create a file. Okay? We really create an inode. For example, in this case, okay? Uh, we can, yeah, I think, Yeah, this uh, symbolic link, soft link. Can you guys see the slides? <laughs> Maybe I should ask you this first. Yeah, sometimes I forget to, to, because when I switch, I forget about this. Okay, so thank you. Okay, symbolic link is more useful than hard link. The reason is that uh, 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 hard link cannot be created for directory. So basically we, and uh, I know the two uh, uh, particular, file, then this cannot be used for the directory. And also this uh, uh, cannot cross the different file system because uh, see all those is a uh, uh, file name, I know that they belong to the same system. They have the same uh, kind of rule Then we can utilize this one, okay? So 
uh, under that consideration, then we can use a symbolic link. Okay. So basically symbolic link, we need to put this uh, special uh, parameter here, hyphen S to represent this symbolic link. Then you can see that uh, similarly, if we echo hello to file, then use uh, this symbolic link, ln hyphen s symbolic link. Okay, this is a old file we want to uh, uh, link to. This is the new file, file two. Okay, then after that, if we succeed, then we can cut file two. File two actually is collect is linked to the file. This file, okay. So basically, we we print out the same result. Hello, okay. This is very similar to the hard link at this kind of output. If you look at the output, they are the same. However, they are totally different. Symbolic link are a file, a special file, a third type of the file. Okay. Then uh, you can see that symbolic link actually holds the path name of the link to the file as the data of the linked file. Okay, what does that mean? When we link, when we use that uh, ln have an S file, go to file two, okay. Basically, we create a new file called file two, this new file, okay. So this new file, the file content is the path name of the linked to file, okay, which is this file, okay? The name, okay, path and the file name. So under this situation, because we didn't provide the path, so basically we just directly store file. Okay, you can see the file content for file two actually is just, oh, I link to a particular file, the file name and the path is file. If there, we don't have any path, which means it's a current directory, under the current directory, then we have file. The, the file name is file, okay, that's it. Okay, so this one, this is the content stored in this file, okay. Okay, so because of this, you can see that if, we want to link this file. You can see I gave a very see in this in this situation we give a very long file name. Okay, for our same hello hello this uh, file. Okay, then after we use this symbolic link link this to file three. Then you can see file three actually is similar to the file two. They both link to the same file, right? Hello, the content, the file, file content are the same. However, you can see the size, now it become 15 because we need to store the file name of the linked file. Okay, so linked file, you can see here a longer file name is 15 character. So this is why the file content, file size is 15. Okay, so this is symbolic link. Okay. Then uh, if we use symbolic link, if we remove original file, because symbolic link actually is another, it's just the star uh, file name. Okay. Then if we remove the original file, make it become a, like a, the reference count, the link number become zero, then we remove that file, then this one, uh, will be become a, a dangling reference, okay, which means a reference nothing or point to. If we remove original file symbolic link point to nothing, okay, this is called dangling reference, okay. For example, in this case, we first uh, create a file, then link to file two, then uh, you can you can see that when we cut file two, then we can print out the message. After we remove the original file. When we cut file two, then we cannot find this file. Cannot we don't have this file anymore because uh, this is the link, right? 
Okay, let, let me go let me go back to uh draw this. Okay, then you you can have a better idea. Okay, now can you guys see my uh virtual machine console? Okay, thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to uh first um uh, we echo hello to uh file file one how about that okay so cat cat file one you can see hello right okay so now suppose i want to use a symbolic link link f1 to sf1 symbolic link one right Okay, we can do that. So suppose I cut this file, then you can see the same hello, right? However, they, they are totally different, okay? So, scatter F1, scatter SF1. So you can see that basically here, this F1, this is the original file we create, right? Then I know number is this one. One, three, one, four, three, three, three. Okay. So then after we use this uh, symbolic link, we generate a new new file called SF1, right? Symbolic link file. Okay. So this is a special file. Symbolic, you can see this is symbolic file. Okay. This is a special file type, okay. This one is regular file, F1 is regular file. This one is a special file. So how special it is, this, the file content is used to store the linked file name, okay. For example, F1, right? We want to link to F1. So you can see the content is true, basically. So I know number, this is a total new file. You can see the annual number is one three one seven six six four, right? So they are totally different, okay? Right? But uh, see, SF one is used to refer the same file as F one, okay? At this moment, at least, okay? So uh, suppose I link. I link F1, okay, to a new one, okay, longer name, F1, okay, with longer name, right? So this, this is our hard link, right? So basically, the longer name, it's okay now. Yeah, so basically, if, if we want to look at the I know number, then you can see that longer name actually this file refer to the same file with the same inode as F1, but uh, SF1 is referred to the F1, right? Basically, okay. So uh, how about I link this, use a symbolic link, link this longer name to F SF2, okay? So remember, the they, they refer to the same same file, right? Same inode, right? Because I use um, um, so let me show you, okay? So what I mean, right? So you can see that longer file and F1, we have same inode. So basically they refer to the same file, right? Then we use uh, this symbolic link SF1 refer to F1, SF2 refer to the longer name. So in the end, we will go, go to this file, okay? Right? So this, uh, uh, the content, so if we want to print out the content of SF2, then you can see the content is hello, right? So because in the end, all file will refer to the same file, same I know, okay? Then the difference here is the size, okay? 
So suppose I want to state the SF1 and SF2, you can see first, they, they are the different file, right? Because uh, this refer to the, the, the file content are, are different. One is uh, F1, another one is, uh, another one is a longer name, right? So we have 10 character here. This is F1, we have two, right? Then uh, because we, this is a symbolic link file, so we only contain the linked file name, okay? Then the I know number are also different, okay? Let, 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 me, let me generate the dangling reference, okay? I want to remove F1. At this moment, we still have the file, right? So, um, you can see that after we remove one, remove F1, one, when uh, SF1 already cannot work because SF1 is a symbolic link. Inside is you to store the pass and the file name for the file it link to. So it will link to F1 but F1 is uh, deleted. So basically, if I want to cut SF1, then I will go to F1, then I could not find it. Okay, so this is why you can see that there's no such file. But uh, see, if we look at the inode numbers, still we have this, right? Because longer file already refer to the, the same uh, inode number, right? So suppose I remove the longer one. Okay, now we have two, dangling reference, okay? If I want to cut SF2, we don't have file because <laughs> this is you to store longer name, right? So how about I echo hello to F1 again, okay? So could you tell me do we still have a SF1 still is a dangling uh, reference or not? <laughs> Let's see, okay? You can see SF2 still is a dangling reference. However, SF1, because SF1 is referred to F1, right? Now we have F1, so it's okay now. SF1 is okay, right? Okay, so basically that's a, a symbolic link and uh, hard link, the difference, okay? So I guess that's all for this uh, lecture, okay? So, uh, but uh, let, me, let me just uh, wrap up for today's lecture. So uh, at this moment, we finish the system call. Uh, we talk about the process and go to uh, memory. Uh, then we go to the file operations. So, this part are uh, basic operations we provide to the user program. So through those system call, then uh, user program can, for example, operate the files. Then uh, today we talk about a lot of uh, file related, right? So before we talk about like uh, how to generate a process, how to uh, allocate the memory, right? Then uh, generally speaking, that's all we need, right? For, uh, for develop some uh, useful application, okay? So next I'm going to talk about the file system implementation, okay? Which is related to your project, okay? So tomorrow basically, okay? So, that's all for today's lecture. Okay, so if you want to um, ask questions, then if you want to listen to the answer for those questions, then you can stay. Uh, then I will I will go to the I will enter the Q A session. Okay, so uh, I will copy. So as a routine, right? I first copy all those. Uh, 
um, questions from the chat box. But uh, see if uh, if you want to directly ask question, also welcome. Okay, so yeah, I think Zhi Xuan said it's like a shortcut to a file on your computer. Yeah, so yeah, that's correct. Okay. Maybe I didn't copy them. Yeah. Let me command can display all link to an iMode. I don't know. Okay. So the first question. So so first maybe I ask you the first question is always can you guys see the questions I I I I copied here? How you guys see? Yeah. Okay, so any command that can display all links to an uh, I know. Okay, so basically we can use state to show the how many links, right? But uh, I think your question is more like like reverse, right? To find all those. Uh, so uh, you can use a uh, uh, search, right? Search all file names, right? Something like that. But uh, how to do that? Okay, I don't know. Okay, so. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I maybe I don't know. For a command, right? To uh display all links. Display all link. We maybe you want to see that for a command to to find all files, all file name, right? To uh, to an I know right. So I I don't I don't know this. Okay. So maybe we have, but but I I have no idea. What what is the uh, yeah? So next question. What is what is uh, the difference between unlink and uh, RM? RM actually is used to remove file, right? Okay. You you when you when you use RAM, then you will call this unlink inside, right? Unlink is a system call to use reduce the reference count of a, a file by one, right? So when when this when this reference count becomes zero, then we will really remove the file. I hope I answer your question. Maybe you already know the answer, right? Yeah. Because after after we have this uh, symbolic link and so on, I hope you understand uh, this uh, why we need this uh, uh, unlink. Because uh, when we create a link, we create the increase the link number. When we remove file, we only reduce that link number. If this link number becomes zero, at that time we will remove this file. Right? Curious how many files can be linked at the most. Okay, so uh, I think this is a uh, infinite. Okay, <laughs> infinite. Okay, of course, always we have a uh, we have a limitation, but uh, generally speaking, it's infinite because uh, uh, you enter all different kind of directory, you can always uh, enter all those uh, files. But if, if you see that under a particular directory, how many links we can add, maybe we have a limitation. This is related to the, the biggest file size. But generally speaking, this is infinite. Okay. I, I, I hope I answer your question, okay? Can we, can we move the soft link to? Uh, I don't know, okay. Can you try this? I think you can, you can, you can move this, but uh, that uh, because uh, 
it will contain the path. Uh, it will works only if you put the absolute path. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can try later for this one. Yeah. Okay, can we move? Yeah, so from, yeah, I think I know or something. Yeah, so so maybe maybe you can try this. So can we move the soft link to another direction, right? So I think maybe we can, I, I will answer this question. Is rename input by link or any? Okay. Um, yeah. So I let, let let me answer those questions first. And then I will go to try this. Okay. We can we can try together. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have some new question. Let me copy to the my ball here. Symbolic link only link to the name, not the inode. Okay. Yeah, so you are right. You are right. Okay. Link a particular file name. Okay. Pass plus file name. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. It's like a shortcut to a file on your computer. Yes, I agree with these comments. Okay, so unlink does not know the file name is deleted. Hmm. I, I don't understand this question actually. So unlink does not know what file name is deleted. What do you mean? Because when we remove the file, right, we already know this file name, right? Then uh, from this file name, we'll go to the inode, inode number. Then from inode number, then we will reduce the reference count. Then if reference count it becomes zero, we really remove this file. Otherwise, we just keep it. Okay, we just return, right? Yeah. So I hope I answer your question. Okay. Basically, the 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 whole situation is we remove first, remove file first, right? We already know the file name. Then we will go to use unlink, right? Then go to unlink. We already know the file name and inode. Then basically, it is unlink will work on the inode, the the reference count, right? Okay, I guess it's time I answer this question, right? Okay, we still have twenty four students waiting for uh look at this uh. <laughs> can we can we move the soft the link right? Okay, uh, this is the beautiful. Okay, we have a, a computer, right? So, so how about uh, I make a directory link one? Okay. So right now, support. Let let me first remove as as two, right? So now we have a. Uh, uh, S1, SF1, right? You can see here. Uh, basically, SF1 is a link to the F1. So we cut F1, the content is hello. We cut SF1, also is hello. So can we move? Of course, we can do whatever we want, right? <laughs> yeah. So, but it will not work anyway. Okay. So basically, we don't have this. Uh, we we cut SF one. Okay, no such file, right? The reason is that this SF one only only store the the file name F one here, right? So how about I echo to this uh, F one? Okay, at this moment it's okay, right? SF one. Okay, yeah. So to answer your question, it's okay. You can move. Then, uh, certainly, if you put the absolute path, 
I, I think it should be okay. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like this. I hope I answer your question, right? Well, uh, I think another question is, uh, well, I know number be used up. I think this is a very good question. So the question is, well, yeah, I, let, let me paste it here. Well, I know the number be used up, okay? So next time we'll talk about this. Okay, when we talk about file system implementation, then we'll talk about this I know number. Okay. Generally speaking, yes, we can only contain certain number of uh, um, inode in your system, okay? Uh, but uh, it depends on the different uh, design. Okay. I guess that's all for today. Any other questions? No more question, okay? So uh, then I will see you tomorrow, okay? Bye-bye.